Uh, first of all, um, as I told the team in the locker room, my my question in my mind going into this and through the last week after we uh, finished up the Green Bay and that whole transition week was how we were going to battle and how we were going to compete and we were going to be in a position where we were ready to do what the upper echelon teams in the Big Ten do, and that's make it a 12-round rock fest or rock fight type of game. And uh, I thought for the most part, even though things weren't perfect and we missed some assignments, we had some mistakes defensively, uh, we showed some youth at times um, that we battled, and that was the biggest thing that I wanted to see is how this group was going to respond and uh, and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with their, a really good team. Um, and, and I saw some things tonight. I, I saw some things as a team. I saw some things individually that um, are good signs that they've taken a step in the right direction. Uh, we're not anywhere near there yet, but uh, and, and obviously far from from perfect or satisfied. Um, they'll probably never get there with me. But um, from that standpoint, I, I was encouraged. Uh, we have a lot to work on, as we talked about and pointed out several things individually and collectively as a team. But I think they realized a little bit tonight that if we do this together and we do it our way, the Wisconsin way, that we can be a pretty effective team at times. And, and it not only going to be not always going to be pretty at times um, with how we have to play and but uh, typically Wisconsin Purdue games you go back to as I told the team you go back to when coach Katie was there and coach Ryan was here before that coach Bennett uh, was here just how those were physical toe-to-toe -to -toe, blue collar bring your lunch pail and your hard hat type of battles and um, I was encouraged with how I saw our guys not flinch for the most part um, and we got a lot to build on them, so we got to take steps in the right direction. We'll learn a lot from the film, and I didn't want to get too specific with the team because I want to see it on film first. Um, but they know, they understand that uh, there were a lot of things for us that w we didn't do how we always practice and how we want, but at the same time, uh, we have a chance if we continue to take steps forward and they learn and grow that uh, we'll be able to compete. Any questions for Coach? Jim in the back. Greg Hammonds was able to get the ball pretty deep in the post. I know some of that is just he's biz bigger and more physical than a guy like Alex. But was there anything you guys could have done better to prevent um, you know, the ball from getting in there so easily? Well, number one, not let him catch it, which we had worked on extensively. And the defensive scheme of how we're playing isn't any different, really, than how it's been played here for a long time. Um, but we, we didn't do a good enough job at times of uh, disallowing him to catch it and he caught it deep and when he did catch it we were going to raid on the dribble and we didn't either get there soon enough or didn't stay long enough um, you know and some he got free on a we had him pretty well fronted on a lob and then we got disengaged on the lob in terms of contact and he got one loose there uh, late in the second half I think in the four or five minute mark um, but I thought Alex for the most part did maybe the as good a job as anybody we had on him just on how he we talked about trying to win the fight early and, and battle him and, and to, for position. And we had to do a better job of ball pressure. And at times we did. We started well. We deflected three or four early um, and, and got him a little frustrated and got them frustrated. Um, but I don't know if I'll have to look at the tape to see our ball pressure may have waned a little bit. And also, I mean, they obviously did a very good job. I mean, you give those guys credit that they they look for him. They know where their bread is buttered, and, and he's – who he is for a reason because he's hungry and he works and uh, he's gotten better I mean, in where he's come from through the, his career at Purdue. Um, he's a handful right now, um, but they do a good job of spreading the floor and um, you know, you're a little concerned about threes, but I thought we did a pretty good job until they're late with Matthias got loose on us twice on a couple things along the baseline. But um, I was encouraged by what I saw with Alex and Charlie. Um, you know, Ethan and Vito got to continue to improve in that area. And they will. We'll learn a lot from the tape and continue to take steps forward. Greg, you talked about Alex on one side of the, the court. On the other end, seemed to give you a little bit of a lift there late in the game with those threes. Do you think he can help you in that respect? Well, what Alex gives us is m another post player that can move and stretch the defense. And, um, and he understands the game. You know, he's maybe not the, the quickest kid or maybe not the highest jumper. 
but his movement and offensive IQ is pretty good from a standpoint of he understands spacing and the geometry of the game, and he moves without the ball for the most part pretty well. And I think that's the – when we were better offensively tonight, and I haven't seen the final numbers yet, but when we were better and it had better possessions, number one, we changed sides of the floor. Number two, we didn't stand and watch. And at times we got a little dribble and jump shot happy in stretches. Um, but when we were most effective, with it, whether it was – you know, cutting and spreading, uh, spreading, spreading the floor, um, or getting some things driven to the rim. As Nigel got there a couple times, Jordan got there, Zach got there. We did a pretty good job of moving away from the ball, and that's what he understands that concept pretty well. And his ability to shoot the ball too also helped us. We were able to put them in some situations where we stretched them out a little bit for some help and some exchanges that he got loose on. Jim. Greg, you hit on this in your opening statement, but um, just as, as this offense continues to evolve, um, you're probably going to have to be more blue collar and and win that way. Do you think? Do you think the guys understand that? Are you seeing that buy-in a little bit more? Yeah, I think they've they've bought in from day one in terms of with us as a staff. I don't think there's anybody any doubt with that. Them having getting a complete understanding of how we have to play. That is no different than any other team we've had here. And you can go back, you know, back through the annuals and look at how teams have been here at Wisconsin have been successful. Um, and, and last year's group obviously skews the numbers a little bit because they were so offensively gifted. That, uh, but the norm here has been take care of the ball, be really stout defensively, rebound, get high percentage shots, and don't beat yourself. And then when you have some more experience, and more talent as this group will grow and learn over the next you know year and and beyond um, that'll become more natural you know you understand last year's group was a work in progress for three four years to come together like that um, so you almost need to take that one out of the equation because it's hasn't been the norm in terms of how teams have played here and been successful and uh, you know it's not just in basketball that uh, you know you win those field position games and in football, you win the kicking game, you run the ball. Same same correlation, different sport. Um, but that's how, you know, this program's been built on those things. And that, those are the things that will help you when you don't shoot it exceptionally well. Like tonight, you shoot at 38%. Don't get to the free throw line a ton because they're plugging up the middle and they have a seven-footer standing there. Um, that there's other ways you can find by not beating yourself and finding ways to compete. And that's what we'll have to continue to figure those things out. One more for Coach. Go ahead, Jim. Do you see in Purdue what you saw in in your team last year? I mean, are there, are there some similarities there, and just in terms of I mean, they don't follow, they didn't follow very much tonight. They, they their their basketball IQ seems pretty high. It appears. I mean, do you, any similarities? Or am I off on that one? No, I think the similarities. I draw more similarities to this Purdue team, and obviously I'm outside looking in. And Matt's done a good job of assembling that roster, and it's taken time to develop too. You know, they get Hammonds to come back for another year. Uh, the addition of Swanigan, even though we did a pretty good job on him tonight, and the other guys that have been there and have, have stuck to the process of how they do things in their program, uh, and they're deep and they're obviously talented and they're experienced. Um, I draw more of a comparison to our 2018 with Butch and Steamsman, Krabinoff and Landry and Flowers and that group. Um, you had two bigger guys, but we had Butch and Steamsma, a little different offensively in terms of what they do versus what um, – Hammonds and, and Haas do, but um, just, you know, play how Purdue's always played. Still tough-minded, guard you really well, you know, physical. Um, a typical Wisconsin-Purdue Big Ten game. And I told the team, I said, hey, we're going to have 17 more plus, you know, just like it. They're going to be, you know, better lace them up tight and, and strap your gloves on because they're going to be some, some knockouts and, and some swings taken as we step in. And that's what I was – the tape will tell me more, but that's what I was – you know, it, that gives me um, excitement to come tomorrow and say, hey, you know what, we can build on that. And, and they, they're disappointed, which is good. And, um, but there's some things there we can build upon. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you.